Hello everyone, I am Maxime Bro from the University of Limoges and I'm going to present improvements of algebraic attack for solving the rank decoding and min rank problems. This is a joint work with Magali Bardet, Daniel Cabarcas, Philippe Gabory, Ray Perner, Daniel Smithstone, Jean-Pierre Tillich and Javier Verbel. Okay, so first of all I will present why are these problems important before describing both of them and I will give a reduction from one to the other. I will then describe what are algebraic attacks in general and uh, then I will give uh, the modelings and complexity for both problems. And I will conclude uh, giving comparison with previous attack and uh, sum up of our contributions. So why are these problems important? Uh, first of all, rank decoding is at the core of rank-based crypto systems and min rank is uh, at the core of multivariate based crypto systems. Note also that min rank is important in rank-based cryptography as well because of some reduction I will mention after. Uh, moreover, two rank-based crypto systems, uh, Rollo and RQC, made it to the second round of the celebrated NIST post-quantum standardization process, and one multivariate-based crypto system, Rainbow, made it to the third round. The min rank problem is easy to describe. One uh, just has a set of k matrices m times n with coefficient in a final field fq and an integer r, and he wants to find a non-trivial linear combination of those matrices, which is of small rank. This problem has been proven to be NP-complete in 1999. Uh, before describing the rank decoding problem, I will um, give a more general problem, R problem in coding theory. So it's known as the decoding problem. So the input is a code and one receive a word, which is Y equals C plus E, where C is a code word belonging to C, uh, plus a certain error of a small weight. So the weight is here, it, it's equal to R, uh, which is an integer. And um, the problem is to output C. So we want to recover the, the code word, that is to say, removing the, the error. This problem yields to different kinds of cryptography depending on the metric one chooses. So with the Euclidean metric, for instance, it yields to lattice-based cryptography and with the rank metric, the one we're going to focus on today, it yields uh, to the rank-based cryptography. So this problem for the Hamming metric has been proven NP-complete in 1978 and a randomized reduction from an NP-complete problem was given for the rank metric in 2017. Now let's define the decoding problem for matrix code. So a matrix code is a subspace of all the matrices of size uh, m times n with entries in fq, and this subspace is of dimension big K. And so in this version of the problem, one receives a matrix Y, which is uh, equals to C plus E, where the rank of E is small. And so the rank here, the metric we use, is um, the, the classic uh, rank metric for matrices. So it's the rank of the, of the matrix over FQ. And we still want to output C, that is to say, to recover the matrix of small rank E. And so the basis of C, the, the matrix code here, is a set of K matrices, M1 up to MK. And so by definition, the code word C is a linear combination with entries in FQ of those matrices. Thus, this problem is perfectly equivalent to min rank, since one looks for E, which is a matrix of small rank, which is a linear combination over FQ of the matrices here. So it's Y plus all the M matrices. So now I will present the rank decoding problem, which is the decoding problem for FQM linear codes. So in this case, C is a subspace of the vector of lengths n with entries in FQ to the m, the extension field of FQ of degree m, and this subspace is of dimension small k. So here one receives um, a vector y, which is always C plus e, where e is of small rank. The problem is that here we need to define what is the rank of a vector in this space. And so that is what we call the rank metric in fq to the m um, to the power of n. And so I'm going to define this metric on a toy example. So here we have a vector v of length 5 over um, f2 to the 4. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use a basis b of f2 to the 4 seen as an f2 vector space to enroll or unfold 
each of those um, coefficient of v into this basis. So you can see, for instance, here one will be written like that, one and zeros after. And so doing this for all the coefficient of v, we're going to get a matrix with entries in F2. And so we're going to define the rank uh, of v as the rank of this matrix. So there is a reduction from the rank decoding problem to min rank. Because when we have an instance of the rank decoding problem, we can write every word of C. So recall that it's a vector of lengths n with entries in Fq to the m as an m times n matrix, as we did before to define the rank metric over this, uh, this space. And so this matrix will have coefficient in Fq, and one gets a matrix code over Fq of lengths m times n and dimension mk. Thus, the rank decoding problem reduces to min rank. Be careful, the converse is not always true because the rank decoding problem has um, more structure than uh, general min rank instances. So our attack is an algebraic attack. Um, algebraic attack means that one models a problem with a system of algebraic equation and try to solve it. In cryptanalysis, the often unique solution to this system of equation can be the private key or the plain text. So in our case, it's going to be something which is related to the plain text, and it's really easy to recover the plain text from it. Um, for the rank decoding problem, the solution um, of this system of algebraic equation will obviously be the, the error of small rank E. And for the min rank problem, the solution is the, the vector x1 up to xk, which yields to the small rank matrix. To solve this system of algebraic equation, um, there are two classic approaches, the generic Gromner basis algorithm, such as F4 or F5, but there are also specific linearization techniques, and that's what we're going to use in our attack. So linearization, it means that um, one is going to use the fact that sometimes the number of equations uh, in a system of algebraic equation can be greater than the number of distinct monomials that appear in the system. This allows one to solve the system directly by linearization using those uh, monomials as new variables. Thus, one only has to solve a huge linear system and no longer require generic Gromner basis algorithm. This works perfectly when there is a unique solution. That's important in our case, and uh, that's why we use uh, the rank exactly equal to R in our uh, instances uh, instead of smaller, uh, smaller than or equal to R. Moreover, if the this new a huge linear system is sparse, one can take advantage of this sparsity to use Wiedemann's algorithm instead of uh, the classic Strachan one. So here is a linearization toy example. So here we have a system of four equations over this polynomial ring, F2 with uh, three variables x, y, z. And so we want to find the only point uh, where all those polynomials vanish. In this polynomial ring with three variables, there are 20 distinct monomials of degree less than or equal to three. But if you look carefully, only five of them, including one, appear in this system with four equations. So we can write the Macaulay matrix, this one, um, associated to this system. And we look for a vector in the right kernel of it, of this form with a one at the end. And doing so, we're going to get affectation or the, the values of those monomials, those distinct monomials that appear in the system. And so um, here it's 0, 1, 0, 1. And as we have here the value of z, it is really easy to go from the affectations of those monomials to the final solution. But sometimes this step can be really hard. And that's why I'm going to describe how we, do, we deal with it in our uh, modelings after. And recall that it's really important that we have only one solution. So both our modeling uh, for mean rank and the rank decoding problem rely on an important fact, which is that one can write a matrix M, usually of small rank, as a product SC, where S is a basis of the column space of the matrix, and C uh, is the matrix containing the coordinates of every of those columns in this basis S. Um, of course, if the, the matrix M is not of small rank, uh, um, this decomposition would be, uh, would be trivial. And it is also important that the, the roles of S and C are uh, perfectly permutable. We can consider C as a basis of the row space of M, and then S would be the coordinates uh, um, of every row of M in the basis C. 
So recall that in the mirroring problem, one wants to find an FQ linear combination of K matrices, which is of small rank. So here we have variable Xi. We call them the linear variable because they appear in a linear combination. And so we're going to write that this matrix, since it has small rank, can be written S times C. Now you can notice that if we look at the first row of this matrix, it belongs exactly to the row space of the matrix C because it's going to be a linear combination of the, the rows of C. And so if we put this line at the top of the matrix C, we're going to get a matrix of rank R because C is of full rank R and it has um, R plus one rows. So all the maximal minors of size, of course, R plus one in this matrix will vanish. And so this yields to a system of algebraic equation depending only on the linear variable Xi and the coefficient, the entries in the matrix C. And of course, we can do this for all the M rows of this matrix. An important fact is that expanding each of those maximal minors with respect to the first row, the one in purple over there, whose coefficients are linear form in the linear variable Xi, and considering all the maximal minors of C as new variable CT, one gets a bilinear system in the variable Xi and CTs. This system, is, this modeling, is called the support minors modeling. If one doesn't have enough equation um, to solve this, uh, this system, so it means that we don't reach the linearization bound, we can get more equation multiplying every of those equation by degree B minus one monomials in the linear variable Xi. And so the new variable, so there are UB of them, uh, will, will have this form. They're gonna be degree B monomials in the Xi multiplied by CT. And so all those variables will belong to FQ, and it's the same for the equation. And so the complexity, as it's a linear system, the complexity to solve this system will be, it's given here, um, it's written classic because it's a complexity to solve um, a linear system. So it's gonna be using, for instance, Strassen algorithm. But sometimes, especially when B is greater or equal to two, it's uh, more interesting to use uh, uh, the Wiedemann approach for solving a uh, sparse linear system because all those equations will have only this much term per equation. So it's a really sparse system. And so sometimes uh, we're gonna use Wiedemann approach and that's why there is a, a mean in the complexity. Now, I described the fact that sometimes we are what we call um, underdetermined. So it means we don't have enough equation, but on the other end, sometimes, not multiplying um, the, the, the original equation of degree one in, in uh, the Xi and one in the CT, the bilinear system, we already have uh, way too much equation. And so to make the complexity of this attack uh, less expensive, we can remove some of the uh, columns of the original set of matrices we are looking for um, a small rank with, and we're going to get uh, less variable and less equation. And we, we're going to try to remove as many columns as we can so that uh, the, the problem has the, the, least, um, the least complexity. Now I'm going to describe our modeling for the rank decoding problem. As I presented it before, there is a perfect equivalence between uh, the decoding problem for matrix code and the mean rank problem. But in the rank decoding problem, there is a reduction to mean rank, but it's not equivalent. So it means that the FQM linearity in the rank decoding problem gives a strong structure to this problem. And that's the one we're going to use to solve it instead of just using the mean rank instance, which is associated to it. And so when we want to solve an instance of the rank decoding problem, recall that we receive a word Y, which is C plus E. And so the idea is to add the the this word to the code c so that now we have a new code c tilde which uh, um, contains all non-zero multiple lambda e of e and so we're gonna compute the parity check matrix of this new code and as we did before we're gonna write e which is a small rank as a product of two matrices s and c but this time as e as coordinates in a um, upper field fq to the m we're gonna need a basis of fq to the m seen as an fq vector space in front of it and so 
we're going to get this system of, um, of algebraic equations. And you can note here that we explicitly gave a vector which belongs to the kernel of this matrix. Of this matrix sorry. So we know that the rank of this matrix will be smaller or equal to R minus 1. Thus, all maximal minors of this matrix will vanish. So this uh, system of algebraic equations uh, is the one considered in the previous attack against the rank decoding problem, um, which was given by Bardet and Al at Euroquip 2020. The starting point of our new attack uh, is to use the fact that those maximal minors, uh, so recall that it was the maximal minors of this matrix, uh, can be written uh, as linear combination of maximal minors or determinants of the matrix C. And this is due to this formula, which comes from the cauchy binet formula, which generalizes the formula for determinant of square matrices. And so we can consider those determinants, uh, those minors, uh, as new variable CT. So that's the first fact mentioned here. And so it yields to a linear system in the CTs. Another important fact, uh, recall that it was hard to uh, solve sometimes the, the last step from going in linearization to go from affectation to every monomials to the, um, the affectation for every single variables. So here we have uh, a lot of solution for this system because the matrix C can be written, for instance, in systematic form to make it unique. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to put the identity in front of the matrix C. And this is really important because as we consider CTs, which are determinants of this matrix uh, as uh, new variables, uh, every single entries uh, of C will be one of those uh, uh, maximal minors. In fact, we just have to take uh, R minus one uh, columns in this, um, in this part with the identity and one here to get, for instance, this coefficient or this one, depending on which R minus one row, uh, columns we choose here. And so those new variables, the CTs, includes exactly the coefficient of C. And so this uh, new modeling is called the max minors modeling. Now, the complexity to solve our attack against the rank decoding problem. So we have a linear system in the variable uh, CTs and uh, M times this binomial coefficient equations over FQ because we're going to unroll all the equation uh, which were minors um, over FQ to the M into um, the ground field. And so that's why we're going to get uh, M, M factor here. And so as long as we have uh, this condition, which is fulfilled, so more equation than variable, we can solve this system. And as it is not sparse, we won't use the, the Wiedemann algorithm. Exactly like we did before for min rank, and it's going to be uh, exactly the same here. If we have way more equation than variables, we want to remove some of those equation and variables. And we're going to do this puncturing the code, which means exactly the same as we did for min rank. We're going to remove some of the coordinates or some of the, the, the columns in the min rank associated instance uh, so that the, the, the problem is easier to solve. And so we are looking for the biggest integer p such that this condition is fulfilled. So it's going to remove variables and equation. And when we find this value, we can solve this system at a lower cost. On the other end, if we want to solve the problem, but we don't have enough equation, we can guess some of the columns of the matrix C. So it's going to remove some variables because we're going to know more maximal minors. But this can be done only at an exponential cost. So that's why we're going to have here the, the cost to guess uh, um, columns in the matrix C. But doing so, we're going to remove variables and we won't change the number of equations. So we need to find this time the smallest integer A so that this condition is fulfilled. And it's called the hybrid case. Oh, and I forgot to mention it. The one where we puncture the code is called the super overdetermined case. Notice also that uh, this approach, this hybrid approach, uh, um, which consists in guessing some of the column of the, the matrix C, can also be done for the min rank problem. So when we don't have enough equation for the, for the min rank uh, in our min rank modeling, we can also, instead of multiplying the equation by uh, the x variable, we could also guess at an exponential cost uh, some of the columns of the matrix C. 
Now you may wonder how can we solve a rank decoding instance when the hybrid approach does not work. So it means that uh, um, A, the integer A is way too big. So the exponential cost of guessing columns in C will be too, uh, too big. In this case, uh, we can combine both modeling and uh, this rely on the, the fundamental fact that the variable cities in the max miners and support modelings are exactly the same. They are both determinants, maximal miners, of the, um, the metric C. And so, as there is a reduction from the rank decoding problem to min rank, we can perfectly combine those modelings. So recall that in the max minor modeling, we have uh, monomials of the form uh, degree 1 in CT and degree 0 in XI, because they only have degree 1 in CT. And in the support miners modeling, we have degree 1 in the XI and degree 1 in the CT. So we're gonna, if we don't have enough equation, multiply those equations by degree B minus 1 monomials in the linear variable XI. And here, degree B monomials in the XI variable. So we're going to get uh, new variables that are perfectly compatible in, those, uh, in both of those systems. And so the complexity in this case, uh, where um, the hybrid attack is too expensive, uh, is called the underdetermined case. And so the complexity to solve it uh, is either the classic approach or the Wiedemann approach, where here, TB, will be um, the number of term per equation, which is the average between both modeling. So here is the comparison of um, our attack to the previous one against the rank decoding problem. So the previous one was by Barden Al at Euroquip 2020. And so you can see it's in the last column here and ours is here in bold. And so you can see that our attack is always better. And uh, um, it was possible to go below the claim security of all those crypto system because usually they were in the um, super over determined case. So it means that here you see that P is, um, is important, sometimes 9 or even 40. So it means that we could puncture or remove uh, 40 coordinates of the, uh, of the initial code. When B equals 0, it means uh, um, that we are not in the, the underdetermined case. And when A is positive, for instance, uh, here, it means that we had to guess three columns of uh, the matrix C. Here is the complexity of our attack against the min rank problem. So it applies uh, to the rainbow crypto system, which is a multivariate based crypto system. And you can see that uh, our attack uh, improves significantly the previous attack on min rank. But be careful, uh, the min rank attack is usually not the best one against um, those parameters for rainbows, because the, the best attack is usually uh, either RBS or DA. But we can see that for two of our uh, new attack, the complexity is even better than the best attack on the rainbow crypto system. So now I'm going to conclude giving you a sum up of our contributions. So we improved significantly the best known attack against the rank decoding problem. We also gave a new algebraic attack against min rank. Two rank based crypto systems, Rollo and RQC, did not reach the third round of the aforementioned uh, NIST standardization process, especially because of our attacks. Nevertheless, in the report on the second round, NIST emphasized on the importance to keep studying rank-based cryptography. To quote them, NIST believes rank-based cryptography should continue to be researched because it offers a nice alternative to traditional aming metric. Thank you for your attention.